Generosity is not just an interesting topic in the Bible. It's actually a wonderful study about the character of our God. And Jesus reveals the heart of a generous God, and that challenges our own hearts to the very core. We're excited to share this with you in your group, because in your group you have time to discuss much of the how when it comes to these wonderful biblical truths. We encourage you now to consider some of the questions that could help us to put the theory into practice for every particular topic. So the first question is, who owns what? It's the first question, and we need to answer it when we talk about resources. The question again is, who does it all actually belong to? If I worked for it, does it then actually belong to me? Or am I still just a steward of God's possessions? We believe that all that we have is a gift from our Creator. He owns everything, including my life. He gave me the creativity to earn a living. And I am to honor Him by the way that I steward His gifts to me, the time, the treasure, the talents that I have. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it the world, and all who live in it. He founded it on the seas and he established it on the waters. The question for your group then is, what is the one thing that we should change to display that our possessions belong to the Lord? Here's another question. How does God feel about money? It's wonderful how many times the Bible addresses our concerns and our fears in regards to our resources. The Bible talks about money so many times just to remind us that our financial status is important to God. There are about 2,000 verses in the Bible about money and treasures, and 16 of the 38 parables of Jesus are about money. Let's read Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Don't store up treasures here on earth. Moth and rust can destroy them, and thieves can break in and steal them. Instead, store up your treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy Thieves cannot break in and steal them. Your heart will always be where your treasure is because you cannot serve both God and money. Now, Jesus talks about our definition of what a treasure is. We obviously equate our treasures into earthly possessions like property or savings, investments, or even goods. But Jesus teaches that our treasures are in heaven. That means that only when our earthly wealth serves the bigger plan of God for our lives, that it will then bring joy and meaning. Jesus says, your heart will be where your treasure is. So the key issue at hand is, who is your master, money or God? Let's discuss this in our group and how we can use money to serve God and use it as a tool to achieve God-honoring outcomes. Because a follower of Jesus declares, God is my master, and money will become an instrument of worship as I pursue his purposes for my life and for his kingdom. Now, we want to end with the idea of a heart that loves giving. See how John 3 verse 16 describes how much God loved the world, so much that he gave. Giving is a statement of love. We live a generous life because we love our God. Our first commitment is not to the needs of people. Our first commitment is to the one whose image and whose likeness we are created in. He's a generous God, and that's why we are generous in our very being. Tithing was a very complicated program in the Old Testament with complicated dimensions that sustained the temple and its functions. And it also had a dark side if people did not obey it. As we see in Malachi chapter 3, you people are robbing me, your God. And you're saying, how are we robbing you? Well, you are robbing me of the offerings and of the 10% that belong to me. And that's why your whole nation is under a curse. Bring the entire 10% into the storehouse so that there will be food in my house. Then I will open the windows of heaven and I will flood you with blessing after blessing. Jesus changed this. He changed our whole approach to the matters of the law. And he did it in the new covenant, the new testament, when he declared on the cross, it is finished. We do not live under the curse of the law anymore. And so now our motivation for giving is not fear-based. 
We live out the principles of the law because we love God. And we see that Jesus did endorse the principle of tithing, for instance, in Matthew chapter 23, verse 23, where he talks about the Pharisees giving a tenth of their spices. I mean, mint and dill and cumin, but they neglect the more important matters of the law, such as justice, mercy, faithfulness. These are important things that you should have done, and you should do them and not neglect the other, not neglect tithing. So the motivation is actually what we are talking about. The motivation of our giving is our love for him and his purposes. We live under a declaration that we are blessed, not because of our giving, but because of our faith in Christ. Our giving now is because we are blessed, uh, not so that we will be blessed. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Followers of Jesus take the first of their income and they sow it into establishing the kingdom of God here on earth. And we do it through the church of Jesus. That's our worship and our declaration that He is the Lord of our lives. May you have a glorious discussion about the character of God, His generous heart, and may your group discover the purposes of the kingdom of God in regards to your resources.